back in the first lesson, we talked about some of the new features in Photoshop CS5. And specifically, we talked about some of the new 3D capabilities of the extended version of Photoshop. We looked at the 3D menu and we looked at the Repuse dialog box, which allowed us to quickly and easily extrude our content into 3D objects. I want to look at that again in a little bit more detail this time. But again, bear in mind this is not a 3D class. There's still so much information about some of these 3D tools that I could create a complete separate course just for 3D inside of Photoshop, and possibly someday I'll do that. But I just want to give you some insight to how you can work with 3D and how you can quickly and easily create great three-dimensional content inside of Photoshop without the aid of a 3D program. So that being said, I'm working with a document called background.psd. And this document basically has a nice texture that we see here in the background. I want to use this texture as a fill for the 3D content that we're about to create. So to do that, we need to duplicate this layer. And of course, we know the keyboard shortcut is Command-J. It would be Control-J on Windows. With that as a duplicated layer, what we can do is come up to the 3D menu. And again, it's important to remember that you need the extended version of CS5 in order for you to have these options. So under the 3D menu, you want to choose New 3D Postcard from Layer. What this will allow us to do is use this quote-unquote postcard as a texture for the text that we're about to create. To use this as a texture, we need to open up our 3D panel. So you can go to the Window menu, and under the Window menu, you can choose 3D. But you'll notice I have it docked down here towards the bottom. Now what we want to do is we want to go into the Materials section of the 3D panel. If you come up here, you can click on this button. It's now inside the material section. The next thing that I want you to do is come down here towards the bottom, and I want you to make sure that you have the 3D Select Material tool highlighted. Go ahead and highlight that. This is the content that we want to use as a texture, the content on layer one. So in this drop-down menu here, where we can see all the different textures that are already loaded with Photoshop, we can come over to the far right here and click this flyout menu. And what we want to do here is select the new material option. And this is going to open up a dialog box allowing us to name this new material. I'm going to call it gray underscore matter. And go ahead and click OK. Now that texture, that material, has been added to this panel. So that's all we needed to create that postcard layer for us to basically create this material. So we no longer need this layer. We can go ahead and trash it. And of course, we do want to delete it, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Now what we want to do is we want to add some text to this document. But before we do, I want to be able to tell the difference between the text that we're about to create and this background layer. So I want to desaturate this background layer to take out any color values. So we can come up to the Image menu. And under the Image menu, we can choose Adjustments. And from here, we can select Desaturate. You'll now notice it's black and white. There's no color values. Let's go ahead and choose the text tool. You can use whatever font that you want and type in a word. I'll type in the word robot. That looks pretty good. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to choose a gray color for this text. I'm going to come over here and choose one of these mid-gray colors. I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm then going to select the Move tool and position it somewhere closer to the center of the document. Again, that's not all that important, but I kind of want it in this area. With this text layer as the active layer, you can come up to the 3D menu. And under the 3D menu, you can choose Repousse. And we're going to go ahead and extrude this text layer. Now remember, we could also do this to a layer mask, a selected path, or any selection that we had in the image. But in this case, we just want to work with the text layer. So I'm going to select that option. And again, a dialog box will appear letting me know that this text layer needs to be rasterized before I proceed. That's fine. Go ahead and click yes. It'll take a moment. The dialog box will open and you'll notice that Photoshop automatically extrudes this text. So if we want to manipulate this, we certainly can. We can adjust the depth. I'm going to go ahead and type in 1.4 to increase the depth of that extrude a little bit. The next thing that I want to do is add a texture. Remember, we created that texture at the beginning of this lesson. So it's available to us in this materials section. 
We can apply the material to either the front, the bevel, the back side, the side, or a second bevel. In this case, we just want to apply it to all of the text. So in this drop-down menu, if you scroll through, you should see the material that you created at the very bottom. Go ahead and select it, and you'll notice that that material is now applied to the text. I'm just going to click away from it and move this dialog box out of the way so you can now see this three-dimensional text with that texture applied. It actually looks pretty good. And remember, this is really a great feature because you don't need a 3D program to achieve this look. The next thing that we can do is we can add a bevel. I'm going to set the height of the bevel to 1. I'm also going to set the width of the bevel to 1 as well. Now what we want to do is we want to emphasize that bevel a little bit. So we can change the material that we're using for the bevel. If you open this up, you can select any one of these materials and you'll notice it's automatically updated within the document. I think I want to go with a darker material. I'll go ahead and select this black. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now that we have this kind of in place, we can go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, if you want to modify this further, you can. We're going to use some of the additional 3D tools. So I'm going to open up the 3D panel. Now again, there's a lot in here in terms of 3D capabilities. What we want to do is we want to take a look at how we could manipulate the object once it's in the document. And you'll notice right now in the 3D scene panel, I have the whole scene option selected. You can come down here and start using some of these tools. You can use the object rotate tool, which means you'd have the ability to rotate this three-dimensional text and get basically a different view of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this a little bit until I'm happy with its appearance. That looks pretty good. The next thing that we can do is we can add some lighting to this. To add some lighting, I'm going to come over here and click this little option right here, which is filter by lights. And down here towards the bottom, we can click this button right here. We can create a new spotlight. And a new spotlight is created, and it's kind of hard to see because we don't really have any visual representation of that light within the document. But we can use this menu right here to show 3D light. And then we get a wireframe of that light. Now, if we want to move the light's position, we can do that using these tools right here. We can rotate the light, we can pan the light, and we can slide the light. I'll go ahead and choose the slide option, and I'll drag this over here closer to the text. Now, it takes a lot of practice to get used to working with three-dimensional light. But what you can do is experiment by using the rotate, the pan, and the slide tools. If I go ahead and choose pan, again, I can change this a little bit, bring it down just a tad. And then I can choose the rotate tool and rotate it like it's kind of facing us a little bit more. So at this point, it's kind of hard to see what this text looks like. What we can do is come back to this option right here, the very first option, which is going to show you everything. And what we want to do is we want to get a, ben a better render quality. Right now, the quality is set to interactive. But if you choose Ray Traced Final, it'll take a few minutes. It's going to go through step by step and increase and improve the rendering on this text. Now, at any point in time, you can cancel it by clicking away from the 3D panel and choosing something else. But as it renders through, you can see we're getting a much higher quality 3D looking object. Now, remember, this 3D content is on its own layer, which means we're not limited to anything. We have all the ability of changing the opacity, the blending modes, and even layer styles to this object. So I'm just going to go ahead and close the 3D panel for a moment. Once I close it, in the Layers panel, we can choose the Layer Styles button. And here, I'm going to choose an outer glow. After selecting the outer glow, you can choose whatever color you want. I'm just going to go ahead and increase the size of this a bit. I'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice we have a nice glow effect applied to this 3D text. Now again, anything that you want to manipulate after the fact, if you want to change the rotation of the text, you want to change the lighting, you want to change anything in terms of the 3D extrusions that we apply to it, all that is fully editable by coming over here inside the panels and choosing the element that you want to manipulate. So finally, what I'm going to do is just come over to the 3D panel. I'm going to turn off these guides that we're seeing. I'm going to go ahead and select Hide All. I'm then going to choose the 3D Rotation tool. I'm going to rotate this text a little bit. 
And once I'm happy with the appearance, it's going to go ahead and re-render it. And as it re-renders it, you'll notice that we were able to quickly and easily create a high-quality 3D text effect all inside of Photoshop. Remember, the key here is we're working with Photoshop CS5 Extended. So if you don't have Extended, this at least gives you some insight into some of the capabilities that are built in and available inside the extended version.